Well, hello YouTube. Um, thought I'd make another little video about the Letrosonics R1A receiver. Um, this is an IFB receiver for use by directors and producers and script supervisors, that kind of thing. And also, of course, boom ops. Um, now, they're pretty simple little devices. They're really rugged and amazing little bits of kit. And on the side here is an explanation of how to tune them, but there's nothing quite like having a video for it sometimes, I find. So, um, as quickly as I can, because you may be on set watching this, I'm going to run through how this works. Um, just to briefly explain what I'm doing here so that you get your head around it, um, I'm using the 664 uh, mixer recorder um, and I'm running in a source into um, 3.5 mil return B, which is coming from my computer, um, to which I'm playing Shirley and Company's Shame, Shame, Shame disco hit. Um, that's being routed through the tape out source and the tape out source goes through this transmitter here which is in IFB mode and there you can see Shirley and company's shame 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 is blasting through and that's blasting out on channel 3A okay then um, coming out of the left output um, I'm just playing or now I am tone um, so there's tone and there you can see the tone coming in it's at minus 20, um, and uh, sorry, it's more than minus 20, but it that's all good. That's on channel zero, zero. Um, so that's also an IFB mode. Now, really and truly, you should have these transmitters a little further apart, and you should probably be standing a bit further back, but I'm gonna try and get it to work for the purposes of this video. So, when I turn on the transmitter, the receiver, sorry, I've got some headphones plugged into it just so that you can hear. And I'll put these headphones just near my phone where you'll be able to hear the output of it. So I turn it on and there we go. There's the tone. That's because if you look on the frequency dials here on the side, let it focus there, we are on zero, zero. So that's cool. If you're just using one receiver or one transmitter, um, sorry, one transmitter but many receivers and you're only using one channel, that's fine, there it is. Um, now if you want to tune to another um, source, um, you can't do that with the wheels on the side, you have to use a tuning method. So if I click this button now, I give it a click, you'll see it flashes multicolored, and that means there are no other frequencies stored in it. Now. Um, that's cool because that's the good starting place that I want to be but if it jumped to another frequency that wasn't one of these two that I'm going to be using you're going to want to wipe the unit first so to show you how to wipe the unit you switch it off you hold it down and I find it easiest to hold it down with my thumb then using the other hand twiddle the dial and turn it on like that and you'll see in a second it will flash that means it's killed all the frequencies okay so that's now wiped and now it'll just do that thing Okay, it's hearing a bit of both. It's now actually tuning again to start finding new ones. If I switch it off altogether and turn it on now, there's a the tone, and press it, nothing. Okay, so that's cool. So now what we want to do is tune to our next frequency, which is um, Shirley and the Gang's Shame, 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 which is on channel, let me double check again, 3A. Now there's no way of sending it to 3A, so what we have to do is just tune until we find it. So there's tone. Now we press one uh, long hold press to get to start tuning. So press and hold. Okay, there you go. Now it's tuning. When it finds a frequency, you'll hear it tune in. If it's not what you want, that's both at once. So that's not it. Click again. One short click will mean it will carry on tuning. That's not it. So we click again. Now, you can hear both at once there, the tone and the thing, so that's not it. Click again. You just have to keep doing this. Sometimes it takes a little while to find it, because this is basically just scanning um, to try and try and pick up a solid link. So you just have to keep going with it. And this is basically what you're going to do. I mean, you can do some witchcraft, if you like, and walk around the room and push the transmitters further away and there's all sorts of stuff. Stand on one leg to try and get it to receive them. Sometimes it can be a right pain in the neck. And to be honest, I'm not really helping out with having both transmitters so close to the R1A. Um, but I'll push those away a bit, it might help. Um, here we go, scanning. Sometimes if it hasn't found anything pretty quickly, you can just give it another click. That's both, click again. It can be a bit laborious, but when you find it, there we go. 
So that's a solid hit of that. So we're on that now. Now in order to save that frequency, you've now got to press and hold it. So press and hold, and you'll watch it'll go bleep bleep. Okay, so that's saved that now. So now what we need to do is scan and find the tone again. So you can actually just turn it off at this point and turn it on. There's our tone, click once, straight to Shirley and the gang. Okay, but now if I click again, it will just start, it will just go to the next frequency, which is not hugely helpful. There's no more there. So in order to make it a circular system, we want to scan and find the tone again. This way you can just hop between the two, which is useful. You know, if you want to hop between, say, the boom feed and the director feed, boom feed, director feed. So that's both, click again. So we'll just keep doing this until we find it. And this is very useful in a situation that I used recently with two sound bags and the directors and producers might want to hop between the two sound bags. Certain radios might only be programmed, that's both, so I scan, keep scanning. But you know, they might want to hop between bag A and bag B because they might have different sources on them. Or just, you know, one was slowly getting out of range, um, they might want to hop to the other one if it was in range. Um, so you've just got to keep doing this until you find it. As I said, it's the old witchcraft, so you move it around and for some magical reason it does seem to find it. But we need, we're looking now for just the tone, which is zero, zero again. Um, so you just keep clicking. That's a bit of both. It can take a while sometimes. And yeah, I had to do 15 IFB the other day. There we go, there's our tone. Nice and solid, no interference, no funny crackling. So now we'll press and hold that. There it is, saved. That's number two because it flashed twice. So now if we turn it off, turn it on again. There's our tone, click. Shirley and Company, click again. Back to tone, click again. Shirley and Company, click again, click again. Nice, so we really have got our two there. We'll turn it off a bit, try and get them a bit more balanced in terms of audio. And there we go. So there's our two things, two frequencies programmed into it. We've got our zero zero programmed in off the wheels. We've programmed in our other one. And then sometimes something that people don't do, um, you program back to the original tone again. This means you can just hop between the two. You don't have to do this, but if you don't do it, it means that you turn the unit on and it defaults to the first thing, tone zero zero, which is what the wheels say. Then you click and it'll go to the next frequency. And then in order to get back to the tone again, you've got to turn the unit off and on because the unit will always default to its wheel setting. Um, so you can do that. I just find it's a bit lazy and it's better to tune back into the other one so it creates a circular system on it. Um, now, if you had more than two sources, three or four, you can do up to five on these, um, you can then program them in. Again, I would always suggest creating the circular system. So after finding um, the first one, you then find the second one, the third one, and then find back to the first one again. That creates this nice circular system. So there we go. We'll let Shirley play for a second. Thanks for watching. Cheers.